Please join me in prayer. Gracious and loving God, help us this day to understand and celebrate your dream for the world, to be transformed in Jesus' love, and to use our gifts to make a difference for others. Amen. As we enter the long season of Lent, we're reminded of those 40 days that Jesus spent in the wilderness following his baptism and before he really began his ministry. In the Gospels of Matthew and Luke, these 40 days are given all sorts of uh, color and detail about what Jesus went through in those 40 days. But in the account that we have today from Mark, those 40 long days are squeezed into two small sentences. It seems like Mark just wants to get to the action. The 40 days, what happened there, are just kind of a side note. That's consistent with the kind of energy that Mark has all the way through his gospel, where he uses the word immediately over and over again between stories. Immediately Jesus went to do that, and then immediately he went to do that creating a kind of movement and energy. Keep moving, we can hear the little voice in Mark's head saying as he thinks about 40 days in the desert. No, keep moving. Baptism, 40 days. Okay, we're over that. Boom, let's start the ministry. And yet, here we are in the church, taking 40 long days to prepare once again for the new life we find at Easter. Forty long days. Our other scripture story reminds us of 40 days in a different way. The story of Noah and the ark. Well, we don't hear the whole story, we just hear the end. But you remember the story. God is displeased with the way humanity has just gone to violence and harming one another, and so God decides I'm just going to start over all again. And Noah builds the ark, and he picks Noah and his family, and there they are in the ark. It rains for 40 days. They're all locked up in the ark with all the remaining creatures of the earth. One can only imagine what it was like. Those were 40 long days. If you've ever been outside a dairy or a stockyard, imagine being in the ark for 40 long days. Talk about sheltering in place. Gives what we've been through a whole different perspective. Anyway, I digress. The power of the story, though, of Noah and the ark isn't the 40 days. The power is what we hear today at the end of the story. God promises at the end of this story God isn't going to do that kind of thing anymore. That when, when people mess up, God isn't going to simply destroy the earth and start over. God chooses a new way in this story, and that is the way of covenant. God is going to be in relationship and continue to work with humanity forever. Not just 40 days, but forever. In covenant relationship, God works, God sees humanity as a work in progress. People will fail. People will do things that hurt others and hurt God's dream in the world. People will turn inward and think first and maybe only of themselves, even while their neighbor suffers. People will suffer as they try to figure out what their lives are supposed to be about. They'll become disillusioned, and sometimes they'll fall into despair. And so covenant, this relationship, becomes a new way to work with the messy reality that's human life. In the Noah story, God recognizes that people are just who they are. And in making this first covenant, God affirms that 
We're in this together. God recognizes that for people, becoming whole will take a lifetime of covenant work. And so the 40 days of Noah at sea give birth to 40 days of Jesus in the wilderness. And that gives way to 40 days of Lent for Christians throughout the millennia. 40 days to remember that covenant. 40 days to remember that we are people in progress. Like Mark, we may wish to brush over this kind of time to get on with whatever busyness or work that we have to do. We wish that we could uh, slow, uh, just kind of go through it rather than entering into the discomfort of slowing down. And here's the key word, and patiently become aware of God's work in us and in the world. But in this 40 days, we could choose not to be busy, not to have that little voice pushing us forward. We could set aside special time to reflect on how God's covenant with us, how that's going, and to reflect how is that going in the world, how's God's dream going in the world. We might take time to remember what God's dream for each of us and for the world is supposed to look like. And then we can take that time to be deeply aware of where God is actually at work, in covenant, a work in progress, bringing the world to the glory that God intends. And especially, of course, we'll just remember by taking this time that you and I also are works in progress. This Lent, we'd like to invite you into a special practice. This practice is called the examine, which is really a fancy word for just slowing down, especially at the end of each day, to listen to your life, to listen to what your life is saying to you. It's a way to listen for what God might be doing in your soul. It's a way to be present in an intentional way. And so invite God to work with the stuff in your life. So each week in worship, we'll take a little time for a corporate and a group exam, where we take time in worship to stop. And this is just a model for you, what you might do at home. Hopefully you received a copy of the exam and packets that were delivered to your home, but if you didn't get a delivery, can find the examine on our website. So let's practice. What might that actually look like to take time to let God work with us in progress? There's really five steps we suggest, and so let's just go through those together in this moment. So I'm going to invite you to get comfortable, perhaps to close your eyes, to take a deep breath to get grounded, to slow down thoughts that are pushing you to immediately do something. So the five steps go like this. As with all things in Christian life, we start by giving thanks. As you review the events of this day, where you've been, the people you've seen, thoughts you've had, what are you thankful for? What jumps out at you as moments of grace, as the gifts of this day? Take a few moments to give thanks. And then, as you hold this day in your heart, invite the Holy Spirit in. 
invite the Holy Spirit in to bring light to what's happened in this day, to shine light on what's happened in this day. Maybe you'll remember some things that you hadn't remembered before. But it reminds us in this covenant relationship that we're inviting God in to the stuff of our lives. And then take a moment as you hold this day in your heart and in your mind's eye. Take a moment to find God in that. Or maybe let God find you in that. Where was God in those moments? How was God gazing upon you as God sought to make each moment of that day part of molding you and shaping you in the image of love? And then you may become aware of some places where you just feel like you fell short. So whatever those broken places are, now that you're sitting firmly in the presence of God, just ask for forgiveness. Allow God to move into those moments to offer healing and release. Because remember, God knows your work in progress. And then finally, as you've held this day in God's presence, Look forward in hopefulness. What might God work in you tomorrow? And then you can offer a prayer or an intention for the following day. And then tomorrow, at the end of the day, you can listen and watch. See if you recognize God's presence in your day and the ways that God is working day by day to bring you to wholeness. prayer as you set out on this Lenten journey, on this first Sunday in Lent. Let us pray. Loving God, you have made a covenant that binds each of you, each of us, to you for eternity work in our souls and in our lives, that your dream for us may bloom and grow, and through each of us, that your dream for the world may become a loving reality day by day.